what is Islam? Um, what are the sources of Islam? What are the sources of Islam? What is Islam? Hi, this is Redeep. September 15, 2021. Uh, this is uh, Tucson, Arizona. Beautiful. Okay, now today I have a different answer for the pernicious question. Sunni, Shia question. If Quran is mubin, is open, how can we find the details of the prayer? If the Quran is detailed by God, as God says, how can we find the details of the prayer? If the Quran is easy to understand, as God says in the Quran, how can we find the details of the prayer? If the Quran is tamam, complete, as the Quran says, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِيمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا Then how can we find the details of our prayer? First of all, this question has some hideous, diabolic purpose. One, they are looking for details in their fabricated book. They want to find those fabricated frivolous details in the Quran. Second, they want to distract from the major issues. Like, are you going to stone me to death? Are you going to chop my head? Claim apostate. Are you going to force my wife and daughters to be buried in black sex, lose their identity, cover their face? Will you impose on me your religion, which is fabricated, which makes life miserable, turn this earth into hell? Look at just Taliban, ISIS, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey now trying to become Pakistan, wherever they get in power, they become tyrants, they become pharaohs, they become corrupt, because the religion is that. Will you enslave people? Anyway, now the question is this, the most important. I want to be neighbor with you. I want to have equal rights with you. I want to protect your freedom. But are you going to do the same? Or you will do just the opposite when you have the power. That's the issue. I care less about your prayer. It's your prayer between you and God. My prayer is between me and God. And we are going to discuss, try to find your frivolous details in the Quran. If we cannot find it, we'll follow, we'll follow those volumes of contradictory, stupid books. No, 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 no. First of all, not only we cannot pray, they cannot pray. In fact, the Quran tells what is Salat. Salat in just brief. Later we can discuss. In briefly, Salat. In this verse, God describes salah as support. Not to turn face away, turn to have connection, to have solidarity and support. This has two aspects. As a mu'min, you have connection with God daily. You turn your Lord, you remember about your creation. And the only thing that is important that essential is you know what you are saying, you commemorate God alone. The masajid, place of worship, 
belongs to God and do not call anyone besides God. Not Jesus, not Muhammad, not Ali, not this, not that, not that. That is the Salat. There are few, few things for Salat, like ablution is recommended in the Quran, but it is not essential because says when you cannot find water, then you can just have intention, touch soil, touch rocks, that we are created from water and earth. Basically, being in touch with your source of creation, thinking about that. We are going back to that as body. And the other thing is like the, let's say physically, if you understand physical bowing down and prostration, well, if you are driving, the Quran says riding, but you are driving or you are in the bus or you are in, in your car, the time has come, you want to pray, you don't need to bow and prostrate physically. You see, it's not essential. Even the length of it is not essential during wartime. You still you can come together. In turn, you can pray short. You make it short. But the only thing that is essential and necessity, necessary component of Salat with God, not with people, there is another one, and Salat with God is knowing what you are saying. It says, if you made a mistake, if you got drunk, don't make another mistake. Don't stand for praying to God or be in touch with God, contact prayer, because you don't know what you are saying until you know what you are saying. That means that's the most important thing. Interestingly, billions of so-called Muslims, they violate this one. In the other components of Salat, which is not necessary, they could be substituted, that, that could be given up, they have written volumes and volumes of books. Like, about ablution, the Quran is one statement, one sentence, few words. They have written volumes and volumes of books about ablution. I will show you. And, but, they create frivolous rules, rituals about those things, but the most important thing, they don't care. Millions, not millions, in fact billions, from Indonesia to Turkey and many countries whose Arabic is not their native language, they recite verses without understanding in their prayer, like drunk. They literally pray like drunk. According to Quran, they should not pray. They should say in their own language. Maybe Fatiha in Arabic, let's keep it universal. Learn the meaning of it. You cannot say it without knowing according to Quran. It's not Salat. Don't stand communicating with God like a stupid parrot. Okay, now according to them, in fact, they, are, they, don't, they cannot only pray according to the Quran, they cannot pray according to Quran, they need hadith, volumes of contradictory hadith, has all sorts of contradiction, insult to Prophet Muhammad, misogynistic laws, pedophilia, chopping, cutting, killing, torturing, gouging people's eyes, all sorts of prohibitions of uh, drawing pictures or music instruments, all sorts. Not only they cannot pray, they cannot even wash their buttocks because there are numerous hadiths, hundreds of hadiths about how to wash yourself, how to go to restroom, which foot, right foot or left foot, all these things, they cannot even eat food without hadith, because it is sunnah. They cannot go to toilet without hadith. Therefore, they are lying, not only uh, you cannot, according to their mentality, mushrik mentality, ignorance, rejection of the Quran, Quran is not enough, God could not explain. We need more, we need the color of the heifer. We need hafer whether it's young or old. You know, the Quran is critical of that mentality. Frivolous questions that miss the main point. Why God asked Jewish people, Beni Israel, to do what? 
to sacrifice a heifer, the purpose was because they were mentally still under the influence of the religion of Pharaoh. Heifer was their symbol. And therefore, in order to get out of the influence of the religion of their oppressors, the slave owner, Pharaoh, God asked them to do what? Slaughter a heifer, literally slaughter, so that physically and mentally they cut all the connection, emotional connection, because since childhood, as slave, they were assimilated by their oppressors. In parentheses, like Kenyatta said, Christians, white people came to our land, they had Bible, we had our land, and they said, let's close our eyes and pray. We closed our eyes and prayed. When we opened our eyes, we found out they have our land in their hands, we have their Bible. That is Pharaoh how enslaved people. They accepted slavery. They praised Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was feeding them at the same time. And therefore, when for the freedom they gave up certain foods and luxuries in the desert, struggling with hunger and in, under, in the heat, therefore they start, some of them start complaining. And God says, do you want to go back to what is low, slavery, or for your freedom, pay a price? Unfortunately, traditional tafsirs, they even miss this point. They think God compares food to food. No, God compares the food in Egypt, slave food for slaves to freedom, which is much higher. Anyway, and um, therefore, the Quran is critical of these frivolous questions because the purpose is to miss the main point and to do what? and to fabricate lies. And therefore, they ask questions. Where do I put? Oh, is this a... Okay, I go to Sunnah. These are sunnah.com, and you see all these six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, it is eight. It was six. There are two also Muslim, I, I believe. And uh, this is eight. Uh, idols associated to the to God, to Quran. These are full of lies, satanic teachings. And this is the source of misery, backwardness, oppression, tyranny, immorality in the so-called Muslim world, Sunni and Shiites. They have their own versions of lies in the name of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, let's see. These are the topics. You see, if you check here, search justice, you don't find a single topic. These are the name of the books. There are Bob's chapters in Bukhari. Look, frivolous issues, especially the details, is crazy. If you read it, you see this has nothing to do. These people, they are far away from the Quran. They are mushriks. What Quran is critical? of, they follow that. And therefore, to find justice, you don't find any chapter on justice. But there's a lot, the longest chapter is about how to clean your buttock, how to enter the restroom, how to urinate, and all contradictory. Prophet Muhammad urinated while standing, Prophet Muhammad urinated while sitting, or prayer in prayer, Prophet Muhammad recited Fatiha alone, for example, in Muslim 10 hadith, in other, all added some other chapters, and said to God, Qul, Ya eyyuhal kafirun, oh, you are communicating with God, you would say God, to God, oh God, do this, or you are talking about menstruation, mes menstruation, or about war to God. You tell God a story about Pharaoh. It has nothing to do with communication. It doesn't make sense, adding chapters. But, in their hadith book, there are contradictions even about prayer. You cannot pray according to hadith. This is one of the biggest lies. One of the biggest lies, there is no video clip of Prophet Muhammad how to pray. And well, the Quran says like stand, qiyam. Well, hadith says too. Eh? 
When it is in the Quran, we don't understand that word. But when it is Hadith, we understand. The Quran says Ruku, they ask this question. Should we go backward like this Ruku? <laughs> like, what is the color of the heifer? My idiot brother, when someone say bow down, you normally, in, not in the context of religion, when come to the context of the religion, you lose your mind and common sense. When someone tells you bow, you don't say, you don't ask him, whether should I bow backward? No, that's not normal understanding. Bowing is like this, simple. But when it comes to the Quran, you turn to like a rabbi, you become nonsensical, you don't understand any word. But when it comes to hadith, suddenly it becomes clear. But God's word, which is mubin, mufassal, which is لَقَدْ يَسَّلْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ No. We made the Quran easy for understanding, for taking heed, lessons. Isn't there anyone who will take lesson? Repeats four times in chapter 54, Al-Qamar. But, but what happens? No, they say, no, the Quran is difficult. Exactly. They are telling the truth. Because the Quran says the Quran is difficult for mushriks. For, do, who, for those who do not accept God alone, for those who believe in Shafa, the Quran is what? Shafa means intercessors, the Quran will be difficult. For those who believe that the Quran is not the teacher of the Quran, but other people will teach the Quran, Ibn Falan and Abu Falan, of course the Quran will become difficult because God says there is a barrier wall between mushriks and the Quran. Because they don't have intention to see the truth, to understand the truth. They don't have any motivation. To the contrary, they say, we cannot understand. If you say, I cannot, we cannot understand, you will never be able to understand. You lose your motivation. You lose your any curiosity to understand. You go to sources that contradict the Quran, that distorts the Quran, and then you will not understand. You lose your chance entirely. Anyway, check justice, not their freedom. Not there. Not a single hadith or topic about freedoms. That these are the most important thing in the Quran. Even apple reasoning, I will show you now. Very interesting. Therefore, according to them, you cannot eat food, you cannot even walk, you cannot even laugh without hadith. You have to follow even what kind of clothes you will wear. How you groom yourself. You cannot groom yourself without hadith. Therefore, their question, how can we pray, pray is not. No. According to them, Quran doesn't explain anything. Their religion is what? In books fabricated centuries after Prophet Muhammad. Bukhari came 230 years after Prophet Muhammad. And we need those books. Without Bukhari, we cannot understand the Quran. Of course, they distorted the meaning of verses of the Quran. Follow God and his messenger. They say God is separate from messenger. God means the Quran, messenger means Bukhari, Tirmizi, Ibn Ajay, whatever. Abu, uh, Abu Dawud, Ibn Hanbal, all these people, they're gods. But follow God and messenger, according to Quran, is the same. Because messenger's only job, well, see, messenger doesn't mean Muhammad as an Arab, Muhammad as a leader, Muhammad as a husband. No, 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 no. Messenger is a mission. There is no job of the messenger except delivering the message. And according to the Quran, Muhammad delivered the Quran alone. Chapter 6, verse 19. Say this Quran is revealed to me to deliver to you and those who later received it. That's it. That's the job, man. Not to explain the Quran. They distort one verse. In fact, it is to declare the Quran, not to hide, bayan, and they make it no, explain. No, God says, I am going to explain the Quran. In fact, warns Muhammad not to rush into explaining the Quran, to make tafsir. God is the one who makes tafsir, not you. And God's ayah in this universe and the Quran's ayah in the universe together, they allow us to, to understand the Quran. In fact, we understand the Quran now more richer than them. Certain scientific verses, some of the verses of the Quran, like Alayhat Ashar, 
we understand better than previous generation because God revealed more knowledge. And some of the information in the Quran, we may not understand as they understood. They understood better like certain events, about events which they lived the verses of the Quran come in synchronously, they understood in between lines the references, therefore they were more influenced by those verses than we are. For them created reason, bayine, ayah, to believe in this book, but for us it is lost. As chapter 2, verse 106 says, if a miracle is lost or forgotten, we forgot and lost, their miracles, they, they experience. We don't have them. But we have a new one. God says, we'll bring a better one, the same or a better one, like Ali Hattas Atash. Anyway, and then come here. Here it is, I put hands prayer. There are 740 hadiths about hands prayer. Where to put your hands in prayer? Well, God says, stand up. For example, let's say, take Qiyam as physical standing up, not only mentally, also physically, no problem. You want to stand up, physically pray to God. By the way, I forgot to tell you, Salat, it is in the context of Islam. Islam is secular, means peacemaking, with community, with other people who may not be mu'mins, they may be even mushriks, mushrik Muslims, or Christian Muslims, or Jewish Muslims, or agnostic Muslims. Muslim is peacemaking. And with them, there is also Salat with them, solidarity. Like Salat al Juma in congregation we go, psychologically, socially, politically, economically, supporting each other, discussing the, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the problems in the neighborhood or in the city, and uh, suggest solution, volunteering, com contributing. That is Salat with people, two Salat. One is Salat of Mumin, and every mu'min is also a Muslim, a peacemaker, also you do that salat. Salat is not only with God, it's also with people. That is also lost. And then, uh, okay. And then when says stand, says, how, where should I put my hands? As if it is an important question. What is the color of the heifer? Is heifer in the barn or in the farm? Is it young or old? And God is critical of that in chapter 2, Hafer, longest chapter. It's called Hafer because that is a striking, the most interesting kind of stories in its convention. But that is an interesting. The reason is God says, do what you are ordered. But instead, they do what God ordered. They ask frivolous questions, and they make it difficult. In fact, there is another verse. The Quran asks us not to ask too many questions, this kind, not philosophy, it is not about philosophical questions. In fact, God wants us to ask philosophical questions. Chapter uh, 17, verse 36. Uh, uh, do not follow anything blindly, do not stop on something accept it blindly and your eyes your ears and your mind your your brains are responsible what you are following and therefore it is important as but as far as for question frivolous question i think maida chapter 5 verse 101 if i remember correctly says do not ask too many questions it will make it difficult for you exactly they made prayer as a torture even eating food is a torture. Everything, hundreds of rules inside, contradictory rules. This mess have is different rule, the other mess have. And while following those silly, trivial rituals they made up, they forget the most important thing to be a decent human being, to enjoy life, to communicate with wife, to enjoy life, to be a righteous person, to be a free person, to pursue knowledge. No, their mind is busy with this contradictory thousands of rules they got it from Jewish rabbis the same mentality look at them they have so many rules fabricated volumes of volumes of books religion therefore becomes what a burden God says we freed you from burdens 
We took the, he took the shackles out of you. Exactly, because mushriks, they were like that. They have many, many different prohibitions, rituals, and stuff. The Quran is critical of that. Look at chapter 6. Okay, look at this. Where do I put my hands? Well, the answer is, wherever you put your hands, God doesn't care about that. As long as you don't you put your hands in the pocket of the person next to you. That is stealing. That is encroaching to another person's body, body integrity, without his permission. That's it. But you want to put your hands here, 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 back, side, no problem, however you feel comfortable. Well, I prefer if you are next to me, don't put your finger in your nose. But that's it, common sense. If in a place they ask you, let's say, you go in traffic um, uh, department of traffic motor vehicle division, and you are there for to get your license or renew your license. Say, please stand in the line. Do you ask, officer, sir, where should I put my hands while I'm standing, or in grocery store? Do you ask them where should I put my hands while I'm standing here? You don't. But why when it comes to God tells you stand, you say, what is the color of paper? Sacrifice paper, what is the color of paper? Is it young or old? Is it in the farm or the barn? Does it have tail? What is the length of the tail? You ask exactly the same question about prayer. In fact, you didn't ask. The fabricators of lies, the religious clergymen, in order to put themselves between you and God, they fabricated these questions and they supplied you. And then you start even more questions. The more supply lies and volumes, volumes of books between you and God, between you and your mind, between you and the truth. And then you depend on them because it's complicated. Science of Hadith, one of the biggest lies. What science? Science of sifting food from the garbage? What kind of science is this? They call it science of hadith. And we know what is the result. <laughs> 31 shades of lies. From Mauzu fabricated to Mutabatir, the top, cream of the crop. There are 31 degrees of lies, according to them. And they brag about it, as if it's something. The Quran is all la bafi. There is no doubt in the Quran. But their source, their number is not known how many books, how many hadiths they have, and their, their authenticity is also 31 degrees, and also it depends which alim they ask, which mezhab they ask. They don't have any idea. They invite me to hadith and so I say, tell me, the Quran is 114 chapters, together with unnumbered basmala, 6,346 verses, even I know the number of letters in the Quran, I can tell you. But what do you invite me? How many hadiths do you invite me? Where are they? What are they? No. They cannot even know the number of mutawatir hadiths. 300 they say, 100 they say, all wrong numbers somehow. In fact, I had challenge uh, in public debate with the head of uh, the organization of theology, in Turkish theology. He was my former friend from my Sunni days. And then he appeared there. He lost the argument so much, he grabbed the Quran from my hand, yanked it by force. He didn't want me to read the Quran, verses of the Quran, because it was exposing his lies. And then at one time I challenged him, okay, we have 31 degrees of Hadith. It is Salahatin uh, Yazaj, there is video of it. I want you to watch it. You see the guy, in fact, in one of the intros you will see the guy, and this, this was watched by millions of people in Turkey live for several hours. And then how he was yanking the Quran from my hand because he was exposed numerous times. One of them I asked him, okay, forget about 30 degrees of lies that you have, the lowest one, the top one. I'm asking you how many mutawatir hadiths you have. He didn't know that. He's the head of theology department. He's inviting me to hadith. He doesn't know even how many mutawatir, how many great hadiths he has. And then he called his friend on the show, live show. Supposedly he knows. And then he said, 
between 100 and 300. Imagine that you get out of religion, you deserve to be killed, you become apostate if you reject any of these mitavatir, even the number of them, which the identity of them is not known. They call you to unknown when they call you to hadith. Unknown garbage, it's not limited. You don't know even the limit of the garbage. They find us, oh, there is another pile of garbage here. Let's look for beans that doesn't smell. In fact, some of them do not care. They say, well, if this pile of garbage is called Bukhari. We don't care whether it smells, whether it's rotten. We don't look at the metan. We look at the senate. Well, the senate means the chain of uh, narration, Ibn Filan and Abu Filan. Well, it is authenticated, approved by Bukhari, who's, who came to this earth with parachute. He knows everything. 230 years, he was sifting. He, reject, he collected 600,000 hadiths, and he rejected 98.5 of them, percent of them, I'm sorry. He got 7,215 of them as correct. Therefore, we don't care whether it's rotten, it's bad, ugly. We just eat it. But the others were supposedly more saying, no, we go, we need to go to that garbage. We know there are toxic material there. There are big lies, insults to problem. But we find something that is close to the Quran. Hmm. You go to the garbage. You need that. Because the Quran is not clear. The Quran is not sufficient. Huh? You will get your virus there. You get your poison there. You say, well, this mushroom here looks good. You eat it. <laughs> you, get, <laughs> you get the bean that there is germinate virus in it. Therefore, you are all get on intoxicated if you are buzzing around that garbage pile. No, this is not Bukhari. We are Shia. We have our own garbage pile. We call it Najul Balaga. Anyway, uh, here it is. And they fabricated hadith. Lo and behold. 740, I see that. Maybe some of them may not, but hundreds of hadith. In fact, once I found it in, in Bukhari, maybe alone, 70, 98 hadith about where to put the hands. It's become very important. Oh my gosh, if you put your hands on the side, because I think it was much, uh, once it was a political, it is a point, it's a topic of po uh, political contention. They were killing each other, Shiites and Sunnis. Therefore, Shiites did this. It was kind of political symbol, and they did this. And then they fabricated hadith. Well, if you do your hands this, you go to hell. Or it is haram. You cannot do that. But according to hadith, Prophet Muhammad put his hand on top of his heart, left side. And right hand must be on the left hand. And the way you hold it, they're all the fingers and everything is detailed. And then in another hadith, well, Prophet Muhammad put on top of his navel. Nope, below his navel, below his belly buttock. <laughs> and some hadiths, there are basically three. In some hadiths, what is become Shiite version, hands down. Well, four combinations. You covered all possible combinations. There's no hadith about this one, but uh, someone more creative could make it up that one. That one we also included. You don't need that. Even it is important where to put your hands through dice, most likely you will hit one of these. <laughs> but you just sift through all these nonsense. Evolution. The Quran has one statement, evolution. Wash your hands until here, until ankle, and then wash your face, and wipe your head, and then your feet. Wipe your feet. It comes after that, most likely after that. But you say, well, instead of wiping the head, it goes, instead of wipe, it jumps over it, skips over it, washing the face, therefore wiping. It is a different reading, a little bit more awkward reading. Okay, wash your feet, no problem. But that's it. That's simple. Wash your hands until here, until Merafiq. And then wash your face. Oh, how do I show, wash my face? Three times or four times, one time. What is the color of the haver? Should, while I am washing, should I put in my nose? Why should I clean my ears? 
Wash your face however you want. There is no rule about it. If your nose dirty, of course clean your nose. But if it's not dirty, there is no such a thing in the Quran. It doesn't tell you wash your nose, pull water into your nose. That through this question they made up whole religions, they fight over it, kill each other. Nonsense. And by this way, that is the way they attract. You need these details, and then stone into death, turning life into hell, pedophilia, burying women in black sex, and slavery, and all sorts of prohibitions of God's blessing. Look at them. Okay, check this one. This is Tirmizi, this is Sunani Ibn Majah, Abu Dawud, Jamiat Zikkumin Kökü Tirmizi. These are other books, you see? Not only eight books, there are even more other books coming. Tirmizi, Tirmizi, Abu Dawud. Oh, recently we find hadith. They say, we say, uh, God limits the prohibition regarding de dietary prohibitions regarding animals to four. Do not eat carcass, that animal dies on its own, falls or get uh, beaten by something or disease from disease. Don't eat that animal and don't drink running blood and uh, the meat of, meat of the pig and anything that is sacrificed for other than God, just for Ali, Muhammad, or Jesus, or whatever. That's it. It is for protest. Because shirk is one of the biggest trouble in human history. It takes away your freedom. It makes you get subjugated to religious clergymen and politicians. You become a slave. And these are four things. That's it. It says in the, it is chapter 6, 145, goes until 152. Chapter 6, Al An'am. And read those. They say in Revelation that I re revealed to me, I don't find any prohibition except this. That's it. It is about dietary, in the context about animals. That's it. But they add many, many. They even, some sex, some hadith uh, prohibits shrimp or lobster, cl clam, and many other things. And then they ask us, can you eat dogs? Is it halal? Well, Chinese people eat them. They eat even warm, delicious. If I was raised there, it would be delicious for me too, even you. For example, Indian people who are vegetarian, they say, how can you eat meat? Are you cannibal? This is meat, animal. Yeah. According to them, it is disgusting. But for you, because you are raised as a child, eating meat, it's okay. If you were raised in China, and you eat with warm, delicious warm, a lot of protein in it. It's up to your stomach. It is your personal cultural choice. You cannot make your cultural choice, sanctify it, attribute it to God, and tell people this is what God ordered. Do you like that Indian people say, meat is haram, God made it haram, because they don't like it? No. The same. But in Hadith books, they fabricate it so much, but In that hadith, in Tirmizi ibn Majah, Abu Dawud says, Prophet Muhammad, they ask Prophet Muhammad, is it okay to eat hyenas, hyena, that eat carcass, the animal, the mammal that eat carcass? Yes, it is halal. Can we eat rats? Yes, it is halal according to hadith. They were eating rats. They were eating locusts, the bug. Look at the hadith book. Supposedly they want to say, Quran is they can eat dog meat. Well, according to your hadith, it is sunnah to eat <laughs> locusts, to eat what uh, hyenas and rats. Shame on you guys. Contradiction all over. And uh, this is evolution together for prayer. You can stop it if you want to go. And let's see what the urine. How urinated? On urine, there are 314 hadiths. It's very important. But also they say drinking camel's urine is shifa, is healing in it. And there is one hadith, uh, 
in, uh, in uh, these books, including Bukhari, Urayna and Uqayla. Urayna and Uqayla tribe. They come to Prophet, according to this story, and they say, we are sick. They come to Medina, Prophet tells him, go to the mountain or to out of the city. Uh, I have uh, some sheep there, some camels. Go drink camel's milk and urine. Milk and urine, that you will be healed. According to the hadith, they go there, supposedly they kill the shepherd, and then supposedly Prophet Muhammad sent Syria after them, they cut, they catch them, and then they chop their hands and arms like Pharaoh did. This has nothing to do with Muslim. Muslims do not chop people's arms and legs horizontally. That uh, verse is mistranslated, is not direct, it is passive form, it is about consequence, it is about karma, it's another issue. But it is Pharaoh's punishment. And they do practice Pharaoh's punishment, applied punishment to these thieves, uh, not thieves, supposedly the killers of the merchant, uh, shepherd, I apologize, I'm getting tired. And then Prophet Muhammad comes there, sees that, and he gets nail in his hand, gouges their eyes with hot nail. Prophet Muhammad. This is rahmatan lil alameen, mercy for humanity. And then, according to the hadith, sahaba, they are dying, but they need water. I don't know how in that shape they will ask for water. It is another. And Prophet Muhammad bans them from drinking water, and they die in thirst, losing blood, eyes gone. This is torture hadith. In that hadith also, the camel's urine. And Sunnis, some ignorant of them, they say, camel's urine, there are articles, journal articles, camel urine is really good medicine. So ignorant. I checked them. There's some usage of calm urine and outside the external. Well, hydrogen peroxide externally kills germs. We use it when we have wound, but you don't drink it. <laughs> it is different. Hello. <laughs> your shoes is good under your feet, but you don't eat your shoes because it is good. <laughs> the same with camel urine. It is alkaline. It may kill germs. Yeah, that's okay. Externally, you can apply. Possibility. But you don't drink it. It is waste. It is thrown from the body. It's toxic material, uric acid. It's not good. If it, is, if it was good, it would kept in the body. Our kidneys threw it away because it's toxic. No, in fact, they found another journal article. Well, it is Shifa. It is good even if you drink it. Lie. Because when I check those journal articles, I find I'm thirsty. Uh, those articles, you will see Saudis there. <laughs> you will see one Saudi or all of them by Saudi, supposedly scholars, scientists. They were supported by some of these Salafis in order to justify this hadith, they fake. They are fake articles, fake research, big lies. And you may find few Arabs, but you, uh, a few non-Arabs, you find out, check their names, oh, they are affiliated with Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates, they get money from them. They get good money to lie. Journal article, but not in decent journals. They have their own journals. Anyway, this is this. Huh? I checked Aql. In one of the videos I joined, but I checked Aql. Aql means reasoning. It is, is a verb, it's not really a noun. It means reasoning. In the Quran, it's mentioned 49 times. Like chapter 10, verse 100. And throughout the Quran, God criticizes people who do not reason. Reason, question. Do not follow blindly, do not follow crowds. In fact, majority of the crowds, they, are, they, are, they, they, they follow nonsense, especially about God. Majority of people do not care about lies about God. They do not respect God because they just accept any lies told them by their clergymen in nearby. If they are born in Catholic church, in Catholic country, Catholic lies all accepted without question. Any lies about God. They don't care whether lie or truth. They have no respect for God, or Sunnis, or Shiites. If they are born in that area, 
and they have their religious uh, clergymen or their sorcerers, their magicians have their own grooming, the way they show off. And okay, when this guy says anything, they accept it in the name of God. You cannot have, you cannot claim to have respect to God. If any of those stories told about you or your friends, you would be questioned, who made it up this? What is your source evidence? But these big claims in the name of God, you don't even question. Therefore, don't tell me, oh, I believe it because I believe great. Well, because you believe without questioning, you are the enemy of truth. You are the enemy of God because you attribute many nonsense, lies, contradictions, horrible things to God. Anyway, Atal is mentioned in the Quran 49 times. I found out 146 times here. And check what? They are not the Atal that we think. It is about blood money. Atal is in the Bukhari, is used, or in other Hadith books, mostly is about blood money. Oh, you don't see one single in the Quran like that. Or about carrying water with bucket. Hmm, interest Atal. You will see it. Please check it for yourself. Or tying camel with rope to somewhere, which is really root of the meaning of Atal means tie premises together. And therefore, tying camel to something makes sense etymologically. But the Quran doesn't use Atal for that purpose. Always Atal 49 times means reasoning. Atal, Ya'aqilun. Ta'aqilun. Anyway, and, okay. And then there is what happened? And then there is, uh, let's see, uh, and the apple, uh, why I cannot uh, see here in terms of, um, I should be able to search, um, sorry, Blood money, <laughs> okay. And um, let's see. Religion. Woman, let's see. Apple and woman. This is in the. Oh, 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 oh. I, I made a mistake. I apologize. I need to find in page. Find in page. Where is it? Find in page. Okay. Uh, find in page. Okay. Okay. Here it is. This is all the word Akal is mentioned. And look at this. Oh, here it is. All women given charity, say a messenger said, You curse great deal and you are ungrateful to husbands. And I have never seen anyone lacking in this, sen in this discernment and religion more overwhelming to a man of wisdom than you. Okay. And then the lack of discernment is the fact that, uh, that okay, uh, the, the woman is lacking Nakisa to Dini when Akal. And you see, a woman who has something in her mind and the feeble, okay. Woman is equal to one man, okay. And let's say woman. Anyway, when the few places, few places when is mentioned actual the meaning reasoning in those they are it is used to bash women, to insult women's intelligence. Says, this is in Bukhari. Naqisa to aqli wa deen. Women are, has deficiency of reason, are the ones with deficiency of reason and religion. Okay, thank you very much. It took longer than I expected. And what else we have? Okay. <sighs> okay. 
Assalamu alaikum. These are some of my books. I don't have 10 questions for atheists here. I need to put it there too. And recently published. Uh, it is in, in Turkish, it was 19 questions for atheists, but we translate only 10 questions now. Peace. <laughs>